This morning in my introduction, um, you heard part of our UUFP land acknowledgement, and I did change it a little bit this when I moved to Montana in 2022, in August, to become the minister here, one of the first related things I did was easy. I went over and I studied the map that is over here in our hall. And if you haven't seen it yet, it's really worth taking a look. It's the map of treaty lands with indigenous people in the 1800s and it compares to what they have today. I also signed up for letters from several indigenous groups, and one of them being Hope Mountain. So just a week or two ago, the Hope Mountain newsletter dropped into my email box. It was about deep listening. I'd heard a sermon topic, and I was like, huh, how is it that that came together? The deep of the adult tribal leaders that they were doing youth leaders in their Scholars of Promise mentoring program the elders the elders were listening to the indigenous teens talking about their goals and dreams and I'll admit I have a stereotypical picture of elders as storytellers so this was reversed was it? I wondered if what was really going on, besides the importance of mentoring, but that it was also these teens to be the future storytellers. This happened, this, they were listening for what sparked excitement in these high school kids who are going to be going on to college. Well, it would have been more convenient for them to talk to these people online or by telephone. All this listening was done in, and it meant the elders traveled to where the teens were. Stated action and a value in the Hope organization, I could see it right there. In a related piece of the newsletter, it went on to describe the listening that goes on with running food pantries they support. Hopa Mountain also hosts the local food summit, which is where these different agencies get together and talk about the needs for the coming year. And they try to talk about it in a way, not what they think the recipients need, but what the recipients say they actually need. And those are two different things. So often, and I mean effectively, we make things about what we want to give rather than listening deep to the ask of the people in the program. The program will serve. So it's the difference between imposing what and responding to what they are asking for. I would say as a culture, we're trained for this, so we have to retrain ourselves to come over here. It is part of why we take up a second Sunday social justice offering for Hope and Mountain. I don't, I know we, oh, Peg's right back there. I, I know we have done it recently, it again, and we have done it even further back. But we take up that collection and give it to them with no strings attached so that they can decide how it serves their community. That's also what I hope our land acknowledgement really means. That we have create relationship with the indigenous people of the flowers. That we celebrate their flourishing we support their service programs, and we acknowledge their deep and traumatic losses caused by westward expansion. Otherwise, without that action, without that meaning, without that intention, acknowledgement runs the risk of just being hollow. 
So in the weeks to come, let's he truly hear intention, our intention to help support in that land acknowledgement in the way that Indigenous people are asking for. So that is a really, really long introduction to today's sermon. <laughs> and it is part of today's sermon, the only place I'm leading you. We will follow Howard Thurman in creating space. We'll follow David White in his warning label, and there will be a cat cartoon. And finally, I'm going to talk to you about money, because as you just heard, your annual stewardship drive is beginning. It's the time of the year that we provide you with an opportunity through the stewardship drive to hear the calling for generosity. Generosity in caring for the community here, whether you've been here once or whether you've been here a hundred times. But we're going to talk about listening first so that you can all. The quote I read from the poet David White functions like a warning label, and I'm going to repeat it. It's just, questions that have no right to go away are those that have to do with the person we are about to become. And they are conversations that will happen with or end quote. Because as we bring in new experiences, our brain is working and indexing and figuring out what to do with them. And if we don't take a conscious look, the brain is still processing, thinking about our next response. So if you aren't listening, your unconscious will be busy making those decisions for you that may lack depth of thought, may lack checking in with who you are at your core, and mo most likely responding with fear, anxiety, the things that take away your ability to engage your values at your core, the ones that you have been trying so hard to uncover and nurture and expand. Lance Odegaard actually kind of riffs on David White's quote by explaining it further. <clears throat> The depth and authenticity of all of the outer conversations we have will only be as real as the internal conversation that is unceasing. This is a conversation of identity and vocation. If we listen deeply, who am I? What am I here to do? What is uniquely mine to offer to the world? And how do I bring it forward? In the children's story, the king brought those actions forward in a way that saved a life. So finding, I'm still quoting Odegaard here, finding the conversation beneath the conversation could mean becoming conversant with a buried, rotten part of yourself Namely, being reunited with the core vision of your heart. I'm a true believer that all we need is within us. The kind, the care, the compassion, the love. And it is, the task is always getting out of our own way. Because those life experiences have dumped things on us. That respond sometimes in fear or scarcity or anxiety. Last June, Unitarian Universalists all over voted at General Assembly for new language, for new values, for us to think about. And they placed love as the center. So you're going to start to hear that phrase more and more again. Love is at the center. So this is Margo now, not Odegaard. Finding the conversation beneath the conversation could mean finding that central conversation between what you want most in the world and what the world is asking you, and how those fit together. The conversation beneath the conversation can mean discovering the start of your next change. But you can't hear it unless you're listening. Related, 
or cats. Some of us have seen this cat cartoon. There's a cat holding up a to-do list. To-do's in big dark letters. <clears throat> and I think they're capitalized. And on the nap. Find sunbeam. Nap in the sunbeam, I presume. Eat. Harass dog. Sleep. And on the other side of the drawing is a thought bubble above the cat's head, which says, that seems like a lot. <laughs> I wish our board president, Barbara Tilka, was here to hear this, but she's in Peru. She often reminds me, you know, cats are just like two-year-olds, but they can jump six feet. <laughs> two-year-olds also. They understand the wisdom. They go, 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 go. But then they center down. So in reading from Howard, he directs us to get out of that monkey chatter in our minds and center down. I love that one line that the streets of our mind see with endless traffic. What a picture. Step out of the endless traffic and find some calm space. Because otherwise you can't hear what your unconscious is really trying to tell you. When I was in seminary, I had a quote from Quaker educator Parker Palmer. Parker Palmer is on par with ministers, but he's actually so I taped this inside my notebook at seminary. It's from his book that, that it, is a, it is a tenet of the Quaker faith. You will of, often hear this phrase in the Quaker faith of let my life speak. Because your actions are louder than words is what they mean. And Palmer says, listen, before you speak, before you tell your life what you intend to do with it, listen to what it intends to do with you. what truths and values you've decided to live up to, let life tell you the truths you already embody within. His friend is songwriter Carrie Newcomer, who's married to a Unitarian Universalist, but she is also a Quaker. And she in a clever little song, a line that says, let your life speak because there ain't no secrets. And part of what goes on in that song is, wow, we do a lot of really kind of dumb or obnoxious things. <laughs> your life is going to speak about your thoughts. So in your thoughts. So, hmm. now, now that I'm reading this, it doesn't, I, okay, I'm switching. Page six is going to come before page five. <laughs> the fellowship is calling you also. I'm going to go full circle back to stewardship. So normally when voices are calling you from here, they're asking you to volunteer for one of the many things that sustain us here. But soon you're going to hear a calling about your money. There is a, a phrase, this goes beyond Unitarian Universalism, but it's often thought that the gifts we bring here are our time, our talent, and our treasure. And the treasure is the money part. And we ask that you give in all three of those categories. But right now, it's treasure, it's stewardship. And I hear a voice that says, we are an amazing community where together we try to choose values that embrace, celebrate, and sustain life for everyone. Even in our community, not just us. It's a community where we care for one another, a community where our love language is service to each other and to our greater community. A place here where we come in 
effort from doing the hard work of being out there in the world. Thank you for all of you who are working in the election work in some way or another, whether you're writing postcards or doorbelling or being poll observers or counting ballots. It's one of the places when you're out knocking on doors or maybe you get battered out there in the world. And that you get to come back here and be held by others will tend to your emotional wounds and offer us coffee, thank you, Jennifer, or soup. So it's our sanctuary. You can come here to Midweek Refuge and just be still and quiet if that's what you need. So our stewardship drive is about the time you can make a tangible pledge of how you can financially support the fellowship. And as Peg said, there's no pledge too small. And of course, there's no pledge too large either, right? <laughs> So here's some quick takeaways for the week on today's sermon. Choose one, maybe two. Sign up for the Hope of Mountain newsletter. There's lots of great stuff in there. It helps you listen to your indigenous community hear a little bit better and know what they're doing. You can also see what the future is calling out, what's needed for you in the emotional day-to-day -day traffic that occurs as a result of actions in our largest society. And I would say that doesn't work. Also, figure out what could you do? What little thing could you do in your life, in, in our community, in the Bozeman community, to make it more radically welcoming? So we can welcome in people as they are, not as they were, but as they are. What tangible things can you do with your time, talents, and money? I think I've mentioned the stewardship drive enough. And as Unitarian Universalists, we love at the center of our actions. Just set aside some time to think about what are your actions going to be in the weeks and months and years to come. You also have a beautiful opportunity to take some time in silence. Howard Thurman stepping out, stepping out of the seething traffic by walking the last, which will be Sunday night, October 27th. I'm, I don't want to say the time because I'm not 100% sure, but the flyer is over here on the carousel. Rini knows, Rini's in the back. That is another time to be in a still silence and you're remembering your lives but it's just a wonderful time to be in the greater Bozeman community. In hope and in remembrance. I'll summarize and close with therapist Carl Rogers. During his career, he worked with, he did famously in individual therapy, but he worked with families that had been in tremendous pain and could not find solutions difficulties. So he said listening is the basis of all healthy and nurturing relationships. That it is impossible to build deep, meaningful friendships and family bonds without truly listening. And he has a bit of a warning label as well. He says, don't fool yourself into thinking you're being an attentive listener when you aren't. We think we listen, but very rarely do we actually take the time to listen with real understanding, true empathy. Yet listening of this very special kind is one of the most potent forces for change that I know. Amen.